the squirrel box out of the clamps and that's pretty much what it looks like right now. And I have two scraps of cedar that I'm going to glue together tonight so tomorrow I could form them into the lid. And all these scraps of cedar are off of the same project. I have that lid propped up on my piece and I'm just going to trim it. I think I'm going to trim these on a taper to make it look a little bit nicer. And then off camera I also plugged, I used some scrap from this project and plugged those um, longer exposed dados just so that everything's more flush. And then I can attach this. So I tapered the edges of this and then I also cut this back at an 8 degree angle which matches the angle I cut the sides at. So now it sits flush with the back of this. Now what I'm going to do is rip a piece off of this, probably about an inch and a half, so I could flush mount some hinges. And then on the back of this, I'm going to put a piece of flashing on here to cover any exposed pieces and to keep rain from getting out um, in this crack. After attaching this lid with some hinges, I put this uh, slab of Douglas fir up there just to kind of cover all the seams in the back and to have something for the rain to drip off of. Now before I put this up in the tree, all these seams and my screws, I'm going to cover with some exterior grade silicone caulk just to kind of give the lifespan of this a little bit longer. Then I drilled my three inch opening. That's what the directions suggest. So that's what I did. And they suggest it 15 inches from the bottom and centered. And you want to put your opening on either, depending on where you're putting it in the tree, on the south or the east facing side of your house. So the last thing I'm going to do to this is the bottom. They recommend putting a half inch square mesh on the bottom. I have some mesh. I'll see if it's half inch. And then technically this is finished, that's all they recommend, and you know, minus some hangers to put it in the tree. Uh, lattice work wire mesh, and I thought I had that, but I don't. But I do have chicken wire, so what I'm going to do is the openings for the chicken wire are pretty wide, so I'm going to mount one piece and then mount the other piece on top of that in a diagonal, and that is essentially going to create about a half inch opening on all of them. Uh, the squirrels, this is basically a nesting box for, for them. They're going to pack it with leaves and stuff. So the flooring, it's not like they're walking on this flooring. So then once I kind of Frankenstein this chicken wire onto the bottom of here and trimmed it, I'm going to take some scrap I have around my shop and just reinforce this bottom. It's also going to cover all the points of this chicken wire. I'm not trying to baby the squirrel, but chicken wire is sharp. It's already cut me a couple times just putting this on there. So I'm going to put this on here with some exterior grade screws. There is my finished squirrel box and my method to the madness with this, with this was not reinventing the wheel. I really stuck with the recommendations of people that rescue wildlife for a living and when I originally started out doing this I was thinking of adding all types of amenities that include maybe a food a feeder, even a water feeder and I kind of nixed those ideals because first off I don't want to put food in a tree. I feel like it's just going to attract other wildlife that you don't want near 
your rescue squirrel and water up in a tree in a container that's just going to turn into an algae ridden mess after a while. So I, I kept it simple with this and this is um, pretty much ready to go up in a tree. I think I'm going to coat it with some oil before I put it up in the tree. I'm not putting any sort of finish on this because the squirrel is going to chew into the wood. I want something on it instead of just bare wood. So I'm going to find what spare oil I have around, probably some linseed oil, and just coat this entire thing. So th there's that squirrel house ready to go up in the tree. You can see I siliconed all the corners. I silicone the hinges um, and linseed oiled it. It's a little sloppy looking now, but honestly, style and design went out the window with this quite a while ago. So there's the squirrel, orange fuzzy, and I think she's ready to get out of that cage. And that is my hat that she has turned into our nest, which is now going to be her hat. I had her set up in this evergreen tree, which is where that house is going. This is probably not an ideal tree to put it in, but there's a balcony up there, which means you could kind of check on her, which is nice. And the only other options were going to be this gigantic sycamore, which is technically on my neighbor's property. And that is the tree she came out of, and I believe her mother is still in that tree. And Orange Fuzzy had an interaction with her a couple weeks ago, and she is not a friendly squirrel. So I definitely want to stay away from that. And then also a crab apple tree at the back of the property, but there's already a couple nests of other creatures in there. And a good portion of that tree overlaps the alley, which is by my shop. And who knows the climbing ability of a squirrel that's been kept in captivity for a couple weeks. So I'm pretty much avoiding this tree as well. So this plank was added probably a couple hours after I put her in the tree and that was just because since she was mostly in a cage she was not super great at climbing this tree but within a couple days now she's moving around a lot better and eventually that plank is going to get taken away.